The Eyes of Tammy Faye, out in theaters now, directed by Michael Showalter, who previously made things like Wet Hot American Summer and The Big Sick. This movie stars Jessica Chastain, for whom this was apparently a passion project, Andrew Garfield, Cherry Jones and Vincent D'Onofrio. It's a dramatized biopic based on the real-life story of a televangelist named Tammy Faye Baker, uh, or rather a pair of televangelists, because she always worked together with her husband Jim Baker. But the story is most definitely told through the perspective, through the eyes, as it were, of Tammy Faye. Now, going into the film, I had no idea who she was um, before, but that's not really a problem, as the movie explains that quite well. So, together with Jim, they have been responsible for creating, um, in the 1970s and 80s, uh, the largest, at one point, Christian television network in the world, uh, reaching millions of people in the US and abroad every day, and of course taking money from them, as seems to be the case for a lot of those televangelists, which culminated in a number of scandals, police investigation, and trial, and the general fall, for, fall, fall from grace. So, first things first, um, watching this film as an atheist was morbidly fascinating to, to realize that this horrible idea of television personalities peddling their bullshit under the guise of Christianity and in the process exploiting the donations of so many people, that this really exists and that it exists to such an extent. extent. And the film doesn't really go beyond these two people, but it does mention how many others like that exist and existed over the years. And to me that was just mind-blowing, uh, but also kind of sickening. Um, watching these people live their lives in such raging hypocrisy, talking about Bible and Jesus, all the while living in lavish mansions and building Christian theme parks, somehow it's very American in the worst meaning of the word. I, I, I didn't realize the extent to which this phenomenon is allowed to exist in the US and I was kind of shocked by it. Secondly, I was a little bit confused on the messaging of the film because Tammy Faye is definitely presented as a victim, at least to some extent. The victim of her manipulative, hus manipulative husband, but also of her own views and imagination, her delusions of grandeur, especially the last, that last part is, is driven home quite well in one of the final scenes of the film, the performance she gives, um, and the contrast between how she sees, sees it in her head and how it actually looks like for, for the people. And so there are many moments in the film where I felt that the, the filmmakers were trying to get me to sympathize with Tammy uh, and feel bad for her. And sometimes I would for a moment, thanks not least to the amazing performance by Jessica Chastain, it might be her best role. But then I would think to myself, well hold on a second, I don't really want to feel bad for this person because she, as much as she might have been exploited in some areas of life, she knew what she was doing all this time. She knew that all of her riches came from the donations of the people she exploited. She must have known that she's in many ways conning people. I mean, there's a scene in the film where she helps Jim convince a developer to join their huge construction project. And in that scene, it's very clear that she knows what she's doing. She's complicit. And so keeping that in mind, I find it difficult to, to, to find compassion to care for this woman. Even though she undoubtedly did some good things as well, the movie is fair in portraying her accepting voice towards the LGBT communities within the 70s and 80s, which was something unheard of from a Christian personality, especially at that time. And also some of the money did in fact go towards helping the poor, so it's not like she was 100% evil and despicable. but. I felt that the movie doesn't get that balance right. It goes too far in the direction of making her a victim and too little in putting some responsibility on her shoulders as well. Um, on the other hand, I, I think I found very interesting uh, in the story was how when Tammy and Jim are finally busted, it comes at the hands of Jerry Falwell, another preacher played by Vincent D'Onofrio. And in that moment, I initially thought, yes, good job, man, finally unmasking these people for all to see. And then I immediately realized, oh, hold the fuck up, this Falwell guy has been seen, has been shown um, repeatedly in the film to be even worse than them in so many respects. The way he wants to meddle in American politics, the way he seems to be a businessman much more than a preacher, and perhaps most importantly in his openly hostile stance towards gay people. And then I thought, shit, well, the bad guys are taken down by an even worse guy, which again is someone who is not a fan of organized religion as a whole, 
made me wonder if it isn't just layers of scammers and awful people all the way down in the church structures. Um, other things to mention, I think that the makeup and the prosthetics are very good, successfully creating the illusion that Jessica Chastain is appearing on the screen at so many various stages of her life. Her performance in general, as I said, is the shining point of the film. Uh, Andrew Garfield is good, but he's got that problem where he, he just looks perpetually 25 years old, no matter what makeup you put on him. Uh, so I couldn't buy him as, as this aging guy at the later stages of the movie. And Vincent D'Onofrio is quietly menacing as, as he can be. In fact, I thought his performance was weirdly reminiscent of the Kingpin from The Devil, which is a funny way to imagine a Christian figure. Overall, then, I thought that the movie was okay. I don't think it manages to balance its narrative in a way that I think would be most fair. I think it skews towards sympathy for Tammy Faye, which I thought was not entirely deserved, but even so, it's quite well made and performed, and I think it exposes many of the problems which come with organized religion and, and the kind of power and wealth it can give to people within it, which automatically also means it will draw in people who, from the get-go, are hungry for power and greedy for wealth, which I think was the case with Jim Baker, as he's presented in the film. So it's an okay movie with an excellent central performance and an interesting story to tell.